Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with your thought for the day, July 11th, 2017. And I'm sure you all dropped whatever you were holding and spit your coffee out when you read this article title from Science Translational Medicine Hot Off the Presses, Neoadjuvant Chemotherapy Induces Breast Cancer Metastasis Through a Team-Mediated Mechanism. No, no, okay, well, let's read through a little bit of the abstract here to at least begin understanding what this could be about. Closing the door to cancer cells. Breast cancer is one of the most common tumor types, and metastasis greatly increases the risk of death from this disease. By studying the process of intravasation, or entry of cells into the vasculature, Karagiannis et al., the lead author and his cohorts, discovered that in addition to killing tumor cells, chemotherapy treatment can also increase intravasation. Groups of cells collectively known as Tumor Microenvironment of Metastasis, TMIM, can serve as gateways for tumor cells entering the vasculature, and the authors discovered that several types of chemotherapy can increase the amounts of TMEM complexes and circulating tumor cells in the bloodstream. Or, in slightly more everyday English from our friend and previous Corbett Report guest Claire Burnish over at the Three Free Thought Project, scientists warn chemotherapy could spread cancer, trigger more aggressive tumors. And the subhead here, a new study shows chemotherapy can cause malignant cancer cells to spread throughout the body, increasing the risk of fatality from the disease. Uh, this article reads in part, Chemotherapy can increase aggressivity in cancer, causing malignant cells to migrate and triggering more dangerous t tumors, thereby also increasing the disease's fatality, researchers in the United States found. Patients with breast cancer who opt for chemotherapy as treatment actually face a risk of metastasis, according to a new study as Science reports. The blood vessels of patients receiving chemotherapy drugs have more entry points, through which cancer cells can get into the blood flow and disperse throughout the body, scientists report today in Science Translational Medicine. In mice with breast cancer, chemotherapy shrink the primary tumor, but boost the number of cancer cells in the lungs and circulating in the body. Although it appears chemo effectively shrinks primary tumors, the treatment ultimately triggers the spread of malignant cells, causing cancer to act aggressively and often leading to the patient's death. It is thought the toxic medication switches on a repair mechanism in the body, which ultimately allows tumors to grow back stronger. It also increases the number of doorways on blood vessels, which allow cancer to spread throughout the body. And this is coming from Dr. George Karagiannis of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University, New York. And he found the number of doorways increased in 20 patients receiving two common chemotherapy drugs. He also discovered that in mice with breast cancer, chemotherapy increased the number of cancer cells circulating in the body and in the lungs. So, a pretty startling finding, don't you think? And interesting that this isn't receiving an awful lot of attention in the science press, although it is receiving some. In fact, you can even see uh, science itself, sciencemag.org has posted this up with its just its little, uh, its little introduction to the article, chemotherapy may help cancer spread, new study shows. And here it is with some of that same wording as uh, Claire Burnish is quoting from here. So there you go. It, 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 this is a real finding. And don't worry, guys. Uh, Karagiannis emphasizes that this does not mean patients should abandon chemotherapy outright. Of course not. Rather, medical personnel should closely observe patients to ensure cancer cells aren't spreading elsewhere. And let's, let's just see how long a window of time between this study and its pretty startling findings and it becoming a common widespread practice for doctors to start closely observing patients to ensure the cancer cells aren't spreading during chemotherapy in the way that they prescribe in this particular article. And, and don't worry, guys, because ultimately, here at the bottom of this introduction to the abstract, the researchers also determined that a drug called ribastinib can interfere with TMEM activity and help overcome the increased risk of cancer cell dissemination. <laughs> so, you understand what they're saying? They're saying, don't worry guys, we have a drug that can help inhibit the, the bad effects from the treatment that is <laughs> harming you. <laughs> it's, it's, I shouldn't laugh because real people really do, are dying and really are affected by this, but it's just so insane that this common treatment for this horrible disease is itself 
causing and helping the disease to spread. But don't worry, guys, because a new drug can, can apparently help inhibit some of those effects. Um, this is pretty much a, 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 the allopathic medicine paradigm in a nutshell, isn't it? Now, to be fair, this really is only so far looking at breast cancer, only looking at 20 patients with two different types of chemotherapy. So obviously more research does need to be done. But this is a pretty significant start, and as I say, it's in Science uh, Magazine, it's being pr published in Science Translational Medicine, so this is not, you know, lightweight stuff. This is very important stuff that needs to be taken very seriously. Now, perhaps I would like to think that those of you who are familiar with my work will not find this particularly surprising because you will be familiar from episode 310, my How Big Oil Conquered the World documentary, you will be familiar with the actual story of the birth of chemotherapy in, oh, that's right, the toxic chemical warfare of World War II. The oligarchy birthed entire medical industries from their own research centers and then sold their own products from their own petrochemical companies as the cure. It was Frank Howard, a Standard Oil of New Jersey executive, who would go on to persuade Alfred Sloan and Charles Kettering to donate their fortunes to the cancer center that would then bear their name. As director of research at Sloan Kettering, Howard appointed Cornelius Rhodes, a Rockefeller Institute pathologist, to develop his wartime research on mustard gas for the U.S. Army into a new cancer therapy. Under Rhodes' leadership, nearly the entire program and staff of the Chemical War Service was reformed into the Sloan Kettering Drug Development Program, where they worked on converting mustard gas into chemotherapy. And once again, the Rockefeller's own snake oil was being sold as a cancer cure-all. Well, I think we all know how that story goes, and if you don't, please do watch How Big Oil Conquered the World for more interesting information like that. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. The complete hyperlinked transcript is here, including information on uh, that very story that we were talking about with Cornelius Rhodes and mustard gas into chemotherapy. So it's all here. It's all linked up in the fully hyperlinked transcript for that documentary, and if you need even more, of course, you are uh, exhorted to go and check out my Rockefeller Medicine podcast, talking even more about that insidious influence and how the allopathic medicine paradigm um, really came to be. But this is the headline for today, so spread the word. Scientists warn chemotherapy could spread cancer, trigger more aggressive tumors. <sighs> James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.